Hi, I'm Lynn Hardy. Welcome to this episode of The Living Word. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, it says, For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. That is what I'm bringing you today, a message from our Lord and from His Word, which is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. Today, we're talking about a prophetic word concerning wheat and tares. Let's begin by going to the Word of God and reviewing the parable of the wheat and tares. In Matthew 13, verses 24 through 30, is where Jesus tells his disciples the parable. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while the man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Then when the blade was sprung up and brought forth, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? From where then has it tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. And the servant said to the master, Will you then that we go and gather them up? But the master said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather you up first the tares and bind them into bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn." A few verses later, after we see this in in verse 36 through 42, Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Declare to us the parable of the the tares of the field. Jesus answered and said to them, He that sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are children of the wicked one. The enemy that has sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are his angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all the things that offend, and them which do iniquity. This is the parable of the wheat and the tares. Notice that it happens at the end of the world, the final harvest. This is the time and the season we're in. Many Christians know that our Lord is right at the door, that this is indeed the time close to the end, and those who will see his return are living now. The timing of this prophetic word confirms this. This prophetic word came in September of 2023. It was a elder at the church. That's a mature Christian operating according to the tenets of First Timothy, who is known for being able to hear from the Lord and, and operate in the fruits of the Spirit. This elder received this vision, a vision in their mind while they worship God, and here's what they saw. This person was at the edge of a wheat field with God. The father began pointing out some tares, which she hadn't even recognized because they looked so much like the wheat. But once he pointed them out, she could then recognize them. Then the angels began moving into the field. She recalled quickly the story of wheat and tares and knew that God would be removing the tares during the fall feast. So the fulfillment of this prophetic word happened just as this person had received it. We had members begin leaving this church during the Feast of Tabernacles. Do you know what the Feast of Tabernacles represents? 
the spring feasts were fulfilled by the first coming of our Lord. He was crucified during Passover. He rose again during first fruits. And then um, Pentecost was where he poured out his spirit. These are all feasts, Jewish feasts that they're told to, to celebrate forever. Now there's fall feast during the fall harvest. Remember, it says that they're, guiding, they're gathering them up during the harvest. That's what Matthew said, um, that it was during the harvest that the tares would be gathered up. Well, the fall feast happened and tabernacles marks the time where God walked with the people during the 40 years in the wilderness. It marks God living among his people. So tabernacles represents the second coming of our Lord where he will rule and reign here on earth. That is what this prophetic word is talking about. We are in that final season. And it was fulfilled just as the Lord said it would. Now, I must confess that when I brought this word to our church the first time, I did not tell them about the vision of the wheat and tares, just that God said he would be removing people from the ministry and not to worry. It's because I did not want to concern the little ones. I wanted to bring peace and not concern. But the vision of the wheats and tares came along with the word that it would, the Lord would be removing stuff during the fall feast. And so I'm bringing that to you now. Notice that it is the angels of the Lord that removes tares. It is not our job. That was the hardest thing for me to do. I could not try and save the wheat and gather in all of those in the ministry. Nope, the Lord said, let him do it. I knew things that were happening that would mark those who were leaving as tares. I could not mention them. I still cannot. I cannot even tell you what a tear looks like. The Lord brought me a stern correction and said, no. You've taught about that in when you discuss the books of Matthew. So if you go back and look at Matthew 13, we'll discuss in our, our Sunday service what tares look like. We've discussed in other ones the characteristics of those operating rightly with God and those not. It is not for me to tell you here today what the tares are. I wanted to. I tried to. I could not. What I will tell you is this. We have to rely on the Lord. It is his angels that gathers up the wheat and the tares. He gathers the tares first. That is what is happening now. He's keeping the wheat safe, miraculously. There have been miracles. Oh, I was so grateful. It, it really eased my heart so much when people came forward and told me of genuine miracles that were happening to keep them in this ministry where they belonged. One such person was trying to seek, well, not trying to, they were seeking the Lord about where they should go, where they would have them be, because we had these people leaving and saying things and trying to convince people to leave. And she's like, Lord, where do you want me? Now, we had our Sunday service, and it, in her country, they were doing load shedding. That's where the Wi-Fi, they can't con even connect to Wi-Fi unless they have a backup generator. She did not. So she looks at her phone. Oh, I don't have any Wi-Fi. I'm just going to put my phone over here. And then all of a sudden, the Sunday service came on. And it was that very Sunday when I was reassuring the body that God has this planned. We have a change in staff, but we were aware. The Lord has told us that this would happen. We're okay. And when she looked at her phone, she's like, I got no Wi-Fi. But I'm hearing the Sunday service. Okay, Lord, I see you're telling me where I should be. You see, it was the Lord's angels. It was angels he sent out that connected and saved the wheat. There were others who were brought dreams a couple weeks in advance. And when they saw things unfolding, they understood what was happening. Others, they were just surrounded in God's shalom and his peace. It's up to God to separate the wheat and tares. Don't interfere with what his angels are doing. Let them do it. It's hard, I know, but it's necessary. I'm looking at my notes and listening to the Holy Spirit. 
because I want to say only what he wants you to hear and, and not what, what I want to say. It's so hard. But Lord, have your way here today and always. Okay. What will happen to the tares? He did want me to address this. Matthew 13, verses 41 through 43. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend in them that, would, that do iniquity. He shall cast them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as a sun in the kingdom of the Father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So what will be happening to the tares? Well, what does this weeping and gnashing of teeth mean? We know that a fiery furnace is a place of correction. Fire often means correction and harsh correction from the Lord. Okay, it's not our job. It's not my job. And that's what the Lord is telling me. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why I cannot tell you how to recognize the tares. We have courses of study at our church. And all of those who have left have received those courses of study. You should be able to spot the tares. It's not my job to point it out. It's not my job to correct them. God is. That's the fiery furnace. He's bringing that correction. I don't need to say anything here today. He will do it. I have to let him do it, just like I had to let the angels gather people. Where there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. What does this mean? Where are they going? What's happening? Well, let's look at other verses that talk about wailing and gnashing of teeth. Matthew 8 Verses 11 and 12, the American King James Version. And I say to you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. I kid you not, I had nothing written down concerning this. And the Holy Spirit is showing me now what it means. This is about, this is being said to Jewish people, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they're saying many are going to come that aren't part of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, but they're going to sit down with God's children. But the children of the kingdom, those descendants, Jewish people, will be cast out into our outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So outer darkness, outer darkness is away from God into the hands of the enemy. The enemy is in the dark, right? He's darkness. They're going to be cast out and placed in the hands of the enemy. God is the same. His people, Israel, sacrificed a lamb every year, and that lamb was supposed to pay for their sin. However, when they got it into their heads, they didn't have to obey God anymore, and they worshiped other gods. They had sin. They did all kinds of stuff. God put up with it for a while, but then he let an enemy come in and take, the, take them into slavery. Horrible things happened. People died. Babies died. It was horrible, the things that happened. Well, we have a Savior. We have a lamb that was sacrificed once and for all. That's Jesus. But God still expects us to obey him and follow his ways. And if we don't, it'll ju be just like with his children. That w we think, oh, we've taken Jesus as Lord. That's all we have to do. I'm fine. Uh-uh. If you are letting the enemy, if you're listening to the enemy instead of the Lord, if you're not operating in his ways, then you are not one of his children. Just like these, the children of the kingdom that will be cast out. And that's what's been happen happening with the tares. They've had the opportunity to learn God's ways. We have free online courses of study where you can see what God expects out of you. So you are not cast out into outer darkness. So you know that you're following God's ways. You're doing what you need to do to be with him. That you are truly one of his children. So that is what's happening to the tares. And we cannot do anything about it. Matter of fact, how should we respond? What should we do? I, you know, we are a praying church, and I often pray for people for grace, mercy, and wisdom. 
I actually made the mistake of saying to do it every time, at any time for any person. The Lord has shown me now that we cannot re rely on formula for anything, even grace, mercy, and wisdom. We must ask the Holy Spirit what we can do. So should we be praying for the tares? How should we, re we be responding for them? I mean, because I don't know about you, being cast out into utter darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth, that does not sound like a good thing. Do you want anyone to endure that? Do you want anyone to suffer? I know I don't. So I was praying for grace, mercy, and wisdom, and the Lord called me up short and told me not to do it. So I'm going to show you why. How should we respond to those who are being gathered as tares? Another parable from Jesus, <laughs> Matthew chapter 18, verses 23 through 35. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened to a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought to him, which owed him 10,000 talents. That's about $10 million a couple decades ago. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold with his wife, his children, and all that he had, so that payment could be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him and said, Lord, have patience with me, I will pay you all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosened him and forgave him of his debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence. That's like ten dollars. And he laid his hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. His fellow servant fell down at his feet and sought him, saying, Have patience with me. I will pay you all. And he would not. But he went out and cast this person into prison until he should pay his debt. So when his fellow servants saw what he had done, they were very sorry. And they came and told their Lord what was done. And the Lord after that, um, called to him the servant and said, Oh, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you desired it of me. Should you not have also had compassion on your fellow servants, even as I had pity on you? His Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due to him. So likewise will my heavenly Father do also to you, if you from your hearts do not forgive every one his brother their, their trespasses. We are to operate in love, in kindness with one another, forgiving one another. If there are those who are not forgiving, not acting in a right way, we know tares don't act in the right way. They're not acting. It says that in... Matthew 13, it was those who are doing wickedly, who are offending God, right? What did they do? His ser the servants went to the Lord and said, Lord, look what is happening. Look what they're doing to others. Did they cry out for mercy for those who were hurting others? Did they cry out and ask for, uh, for grace? No. What they did is said, Lord, look what is happening. So that's all we can do. We cannot cry out for mercy. If we see someone is hurting the little ones, if we are, see someone's not acting in forgiveness, not operating in love, and are, who are convincing others and hurting others, all we can do is we can say, Lord, see what is happening and let the Lord deal with it. It's not up to us. And you notice that they delivered them to the tormentors. Well, that would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. In Matthew 18, 31, it says, So the fellow servants saw what was done. They were very sorry, and they came and told their Lord. That's all we can do. That's our job, is to say, Lord, have your way. It's not up to me. It's not, I, I can't tell you all the things that are wrong. I can't tell you all the things they're doing. I can't show you. It, that would be wrong. That would be making accusations. That would be slandering. I can't do that. All I can do is, is point you back 
to the lessons you've learned, the free courses of study, the classes that speak about how we should treat one another. And let God do the rest. So we are in the season of wheat and tares. God's making a separation. There's one more part of this that the Lord wanted me to address is that first he gathers up the tares. Then, then he gathers the wheat into the barn. And it says, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. You see, we are coming into a season of an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But in order for the spirit to flow unhindered, He's gathering up the tares and he'll flow through the wheat that's left, that remains, and he's already begun. This person who was in the church received a prophetic word that came true. All the signs and wonders that are being done. We have testimonies of so many who are feeling the Holy Spirit move stronger in their life. And it's only going to increase. But we must let the Lord remove the tares. We have to submit and let know that his angels are at work. Take our hands off. And that's hard when you love them all. But the Lord knows best. That is the message we have he I have for you today. Tomorrow we're going to connect another um, parable to this, the parable of the ten virgins that is also connected to the wheat and tares. So Next week, we will talk about the wheat, the tares, and the and the ten virgins. Until then, may God bless you and may he keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he grant you shalom.